Uh, right, okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, are you ready for the fourth ever New Zealand show? Yeah! Please welcome to the stage, Rosie Clark! Back win. Oh, wait for it to restart. Um, just a quick sort of yell out. Who here's heard of Museums at Night before? Yay! Yes. Has anyone here been to a Museums at Night event before? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I love you. I love you all. And has anyone here organised Museums at Night events? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, my parents came to yours at the Courtauld. They Cheers! Loved it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Museums at Night. It is an annual festival. It's late openings at Museums, Galleries, Libraries, Archives and Heritage Sites all over the UK. And it happens in three and a half weeks. <laughs> I'm showing off about something that hasn't yet happened. Um, uh, this year it takes place the weekend of Friday the 18th to Sunday the 20th of May. It ties in with International Museums Day. Um, and yes, I'm going to talk very briefly about some of the challenges that we face and how we are frantically tackling them. Ooh, okay, um, so I'm from Culture24. We are a tiny charity down in Brighton. There's 10 of us. Um, we promote museums, galleries, heritage sites. We've got an editorial team who write articles about the fantastic things they do. Um, we've got a database of over 5,000, um, and they all have logins, and they can list their events, exhibitions, educational resources, and we do tons of exciting things with their data. We share it with the BBC, etc. Um, this is Museums and Night campaign team. This is myself and uh, campaigns manager Nick Stockman. Um, we also have a couple of lovely interns who give us one day a week, and we couldn't do it without them. Um, yes, uh, right, museums at night. Um, what we do for museums at night, we help venues to plan their events, we come up with resources to help them do events better, um, we showcase best practice, um, and we get them to register their events in our database, and then share all that data with things like Media Museum all across the continent, and we run a big national PR campaign. Uh, last year, we got coverage worth over £1.1 million, pounds. It, thank you. Not very nice, but the are people. Um, and it got over 100,000 visitors, of whom 5,000 had never, ever been to any museum or gallery before in their life. <laughs> it really works. The whole idea of this is to get new audiences in, discovering all the fantastic things that museums and galleries do in a new light. Uh, so, last year, we had a total of 467 events all over the UK. As of this morning, we had 459. We are close to beating last year, and my big secret target is to bust the 500 mark. Um, you'll see they're happening all the way from Cape Mess right in the north of Scotland down to Jersey. Um, and yeah, it's, um, it's fairly frantic. What I'm mostly doing at the moment... Uh, is, uh, yes, gathering all the fringe events, and I'd like to thank Google Alerts. Um, lots of lovely venues, planning events, and not putting them into our database so we can't promote them. Um, I'm basically a marketing bod. If you're doing an event, you need to tell people. You need to tell us. You need to tell everyone. You need to tell your front of house staff. If we phone up and say, hey, I think you might be doing a museum tonight, then it's time to promote it. If the person on reception says, no, no, never heard of it, it's on your website. Talk to people. Okay. Um, the next thing we do when we get details of events, um, gentle editing. The campaign's called Museums at Night. You wouldn't believe how many hundreds of events are titled Museums at Night or Night at the Museum. We will change them. Um, <laughs> examples of good, intriguing event titles, banknotes and bullion. That's at the Bank of England Museum where you can lift a gold bar. Um, Return of the Leeches. <laughs> Um, that's a Victorian medical one. Real leeches. Doctor Who family sleepover. That's all you need to know. <laughs> that, that's up in the John Ryland's Library, Manchester, that amazing Gothic building. That's what they're doing for museums at night. Um, the other big thing. Um, if, if you're doing a museums at night event, for many audiences, this may be their first point of contact with you. They don't know anything about your venue necessarily, so show off what you've got. It's all about showing off. Tell them the highlights in your collection. Tell them the things that they'll be able to see in a new light. I want to show off about one project that we did called Connect 10. Um, together with a bit of help from Love Art London, we found 10 fantastic top artists. Um, 
People like uh, 60s rock and roll photographer Terry O'Neill, you might know his famous shot of Raquel Welch there, Martin Parr, um, Bob and Roberta Smith, Polly Morgan, the taxidermist. Um, Polly Morgan will come and do a live taxidermy event for you. She brings her own rats. <laughs> <laughs> we um, told all the venues on our database about these 10 artists, and they could pitch, they could tell us, hey, I, I really want Bob and Roberta Smith, and here's what I'd do if I got Bob and Roberta for museums at night. We had over 80 event submissions, including hopeful museums from Australia, Sri Lanka. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. We narrowed down to 28, so there were basically two or three museums competing for each artist. Uh, the next step, they had to go out to their audiences, they had to go out to their fans. Um, it was an audience development advocacy sort of project, and they had to get their fans to vote to get these artists to their venue. Um, this is an example of um, a publicity thing done by the SS Great Britain. This is a ship designed by Brunel, it's down in Bristol. They really wanted uh, the jelly mongers, Bonpass and Parr, um, to come and flood their ship with jelly. Uh, so they were a photo call with all these kids um, doing jelly impressions. I can't show the YouTube video now. Let's imagine a whole ship of um, uh, safety protected kids, including um, a little Brunel with a top hat there, all vibrating in place. <laughs> And it worked. Yeah. They got him. Um, with the votes. Um, there were 21,000 legitimate votes cast. <laughs> the winning venues scored their artists and we gave them a £500 bursary. Um, the venues who were runners up, who didn't get an artist, were really keen that they still do a museum's night event, so we're slipping them £100. You may wonder why I say legitimate votes, and here's where I reveal something that we have never revealed publicly to anyone else before. Um, yeah, so this goes no further. <laughs> this gentleman that you see here, mild-mannered uh, Brighton photographer Simon Roberts, he was the um, official artist of the 2010 general election. He was one of the artists up for grabs um, in Connect 10. Uh, three venues competing for him. We suddenly noticed, within 24 hours, 30,000 votes from a Russian hacker, desperate to send Simon Roberts to Key Arts Centre on the Isle of Wight. <laughs> Some people don't know what the world burn. <laughs> yeah, after that, we um, put in a capture code so people who were voting for their favourite venue had to prove that they were human. Um, we were then surprised when um, over 400 votes came in from the same IP address in just a few hours. It turned out after a big investigation, um, it was a girls' school, and um, they'd all been told about it in the school assembly, and they'd all gone to vote for their favourite museum. Oh. So, <sighs> some nice things happen. <laughs> okay, um, our, our next challenge every year is to find good images to promote museums at night. Um, it's not easy. Images of people in museums, lots of backs of heads, they're eagerly staring into the glass cases. We want pictures of people having a great time, maybe handling objects. Ideally, in dim or atmospheric lighting to convey the at night thing. This is what we had last year. Um, we arranged a panicky photo shoot. Um, we had one hour in the Hornman and one hour in the VA. Um, this is Laura, one of our intern writers. Uh, these are all the kids of the staff. <laughs> it was frantic, uh, but it worked. This is what we've done this year, and it's a bit nicer. Um, and I'll just pass these out now. This is um, our official programme. It's the BBC History Magazine official guide to museums at night. It's on the front cover. Share them around. Um, so the idea behind this shot, this was really the local design agency creating Brighton. Um, think about time, think bedtime stories, think all the sort of things that you can encounter in museums. Um, the dinosaurs, the elephants, the art, the totem poles, the bats, the dodo, um, and of course uh, the tentacles because, you know, what's a museum without a friendly cephalopod? <laughs> Another thing that we had last week, yeah, it's one more further here, um, museums like were celebrated at number 11 Downing Street. This was, well, it was terrifically exciting, um, a bit nerve-wracking, so we were like, we well, don't want to just all be, you know, hanging around going rah, rah, rah and sort of sniffing champagne and stuff. Um, we wanted to make it a museums at night event. So Downing Street was built in 1686, number 10 and number 11. Um, so we served people food and drink from the period. Um, and we invited experts along from the Cartoon Museum to talk about the cartoons on the walls and the government art collection and the History of Parliament Trust and the Parliamentary Archives to tell stories about the chancellors who'd lived there and some things that were useful, <coughs> fascinating. Um, yeah, these two get everywhere. Um, if you're in front of another 10 pounds trip, you've got to get that photo. Um, 
this, I'm running over time, but I'm going to tell this story. <laughs> I can't show you pictures from the side. Um, we invited one person part, the general members, to make some jelly uh, for our guests. And we said, we're going to take jelly in the shape of Brighton Pavilion. We went, oh, Faye, isn't that lovely? Bring a bit of Brighton to London. Go on, then. When we saw it, the jelly was in the shape of the domes of Brighton Pavilion. <laughs> <laughs> I just, like, I, I'm not going to do a hand gesture. Um, but if you imagine that they're clutching sort of two domes on plates at chest height, jiggling away. <laughs> yes, uh, we have smuggled jelly boobs into 11 Downing Street, <laughs> and we're not allowed to show you them. Coming very soon, tomorrow in fact, we're going to be launching this public competition, um, the Faber Archive, the Faber and Faber, fantastic literary history landmark, T.S. Eliot was an editor there, Alden, um, they published the Bell Jar. They are never open to public except for once a year for museums at night for six lucky competition winners. This is happening tomorrow, so if you're interested in winning a place on this exclusive tour, go for it. It's on our website. Um, it is all happening very soon. Um, this is our office barometer of how stressed Nick and I are. Um, this morning, after some, both cycling to work in a hailstorm, we raised the level from turmoil to maelstrom. <laughs> Doubt this will be a chaos by the 18th of May. Um, how do we handle the pressure? Well, my usual... Um, you know, ambient instrumental music on my headphones is replaced by, you know, Jane Mills doing the fastest metal guitarist in the world. Um, and yes, it's happening 18th to the 20th of May. I would love it if you guys would all come along to museums at my event. There are going to be hundreds of them all over the UK, so you're bound to find something that suits your interests near you. Thank you very much. Telling us all about museums at night there and there. Uh...